this is a nine year old boy who is having abdominal distension for one and a half months along with history of jaundice. Uh, they said that the three months ago the child had jaundice for seven days. That is the only past history of jaundice they give. Presently there is no jaundice. And uh, uh, on examination this child has uh, dry skin. The palms are erythematous as apparent in this uh, picture and the abdomen is distended. Now, my question is that uh, this kind of presentation, uh, what points in history can make you suspect that you are dealing with ascites and not uh, any other cause of distension? Because in these cases, the distension could be because of uh, gaseous distension, because of uh, cholestasis and because of uh, absorption or uh, action of intestinal bacteria on unabsorbed uh, sugars, or it could be because of organomegaly, hepatomegaly, spinomegaly. So, what points in history can make you suspect that you are dealing with ascites? Yeah, what points in history can make you suspect ascites? Uh, edema on sleeping and standing, association of jaundice, uh, are the two response, history of jaundice. Any, anything else? Uh, see, the question, uh, here signs is of CLD present. Yeah, there is a progressively increasing variation of distension with food intake are the other answers. There is a Yes, so uh, most important is uh, when there is abdominal distension, if it is progressively increasing abdominal distension with no relief at any time, even after uh, say passage of flatus on feces and there is no uh, waxing waning kind of abdominal distension. So it is a progressively increasing abdominal distension. It is generalized. It is not localized because of, due to organomegaly, it would be mainly restricted to upper abdomen. So it is a diffuse abdominal distension, progressively increasing and no relief with passage of flatus or pieces. It is, uh, most likely you are dealing with the scientist because gaseous abdominal distension it is increasing and decreasing and organomegaly it would be restricted to say uh, upper part of abdomen. So, history itself can tell you that you are dealing with ascites. So, students, now can you give your uh, uh, differential diagnosis with this presentation? Looking forward to your answers. You have here ascites, past history of jaundice, irregular liver enlargement, splenomegaly, palmar erythema, as you can see, and skin dryness. So, what are your differential diagnoses here? Chronic liver disease. Okay. Okay, Dira sir, please take it forward. Yeah, uh, what history you will take to evaluate the cause for CLD in this child? Okay, so the next supplementary question again. What history you will take to evaluate for the cause of CLD in this child? Most importantly, uh, neuropsy. Neuropsy is, I, I didn't understand that. Drug intake, okay, drug is uh, fine, recurrent jaundice, pre and post rashes, neuropsychiatric manifestations, okay. Upper GI bleeding, history of fever, joint pain, hematomasis, lot of answers. Dira sir, back to you. Transfusion as history, yes, okay. As rightly said, this is most likely a chronic liver disease because of the presence uh, of uh, ascites, possibly ascites and past history of jaundice. Uh, there is irregular enlargement of uh, liver uh, and because liver is palpable only in epigastrium, it means that uh, only the left lobe is palpable or left lobe is disproportionately palpable. Uh, so, uh, remember that it is not the enlargement of left lobe which is a specific sign for chronic liver disease. It is irregular enlargement. It means that you have more enlargement of left lobe as compared to right lobe or only selective enlargement of left lobe. If you have the diffuse enlargement of the liver, then the right lobe as well as left lobe is palpable. That can happen in any cause of hepatomegaly. So, irregular enlargement here because it is written only in epigastrium, uh, presence of splenomegaly, presence of palmar erythema, dry skin, all this suggests a chronic liver disease. Remember, you don't need to have jaundice for diagnosing chronic liver disease. History of jaundice enough is enough. Even history of jaundice may be missing because slowly uh, developing chronic inflammation or chronic damage of the liver does not result in jaundice. It is only 
when the child has either acute uh, on chronic presentation or the child has a very severe chronic almost end stage liver disease only then the child develops jaundice which is decompensated disease so the history which you need to take for cause is like history of blood transfusion not only blood transfusion history of uh, intramuscular injections also from uh, any unreliable sources if there is a family history of similar disorder in uh, parents siblings or cousins if history of any drugs toxins to so these all history is important for uh, evaluating the cause okay so now you have the differential diagnosis uh, investigations the next step obviously investigations for liver dysfunction investigations for complications and investigation for etiology so you need to spell out all three yes you have ultrasonography uh, which uh, okay sgot sgpt upper gi endoscopy mainly for complication like varices viral marker for cause such as hbsag and nthcv then you have pt apt and inr okay perfect that is to know for liver dysfunction uh, then you have pld score tpsa what's the full form of tpsa i didn't get it. okay doppler abdomen uh, doppler abdomen okay portal venous doppler especially for complications total protein oh that was a full form of tpsa total protein serum albumin dr dheeraj great liver biopsy for autoimmune hepatitis metabolic profile etc etc will be the investigation to be done okay so i think you are clear about uh, we are talking about investigation smr stage is not a in, in investigation so dheeraj would you like to comment last all the important investigations have been covered here uh, you will have to look for liver dysfunction liver function test serum protein prothrombin time for complications you have to do upper gi endoscopy i think that was missing uh, i missed it a uh, portal venous doppler is important electrolytes aseptic tap if warranted if there is fever you may have to do it uh, remember just a plain ultrasonography of the abdomen will not suffice because uh, ultrasonography especially the liver echo texture Uh, it's a very op- uh, very uh, it's an investigation which is highly operator dependent and you may not get any positive uh, finding even in frank cirrhosis or the other way round you can get altered echo texture even with just inflammatory acute uh, liver disorder so uh, i would say ultrasound has little role but yes uh, the portal venous doppler can diagnose uh, the can result in some uh, etiology for cause you need to have hepatitis b surface antigen anti hcv wilson disease markers autoimmune hepatic disorder marker metabolic profile and definitely liver biopsy would be warranted in all cases with chronic liver disease once the child is stabilized okay thank you dr dheeraj